Hey, Dr. Lim here. As true to the tradition of the accent, a good and real story worth 1,000 lectures. So I shall tell you some interesting stories about the practice of Sunya from the early days that will make you understand Sunya better. Through the real stories, we can relate it with our lives and learn a lot of lessons with it. Even before the establishment of the XN and in the late 80s, I started to teach Sunya to some small groups of friends and students. Today, I shall tell you one interesting story of how Sunya can change the whole family for the better. In around 1988, I served in Mada as an irrigation engineer at a small town of Kota Sarang Semut. This is a funny name. Kota means castle, Sarang means nest, and Semut is the end. In English, it is the castle of end nest. Why is this name that day? Nobody knows. In one morning during tea time, I was walking to a nearby canteen to have some coffee. Then suddenly someone is calling me loudly, you know. I quickly recognized he was Engineer Chong, who just transferred to a nearby office not far from mine. I greeted him back and both of us went for the morning coffee. We started to have some chatting, then suddenly he asked me whether I believe in karma. I said, karma is just the law of cause and effect. Of course, I believe it. Then he said his hand, hey, you know, and he told me, before that he believed it, but now, no more. He said, karma was superstitious teaching and good for nothing. I could sense some bitterness in his statement now and ask him why. He said his job, his job contract was going to end soon. He tried desperately to get a new job and failed in every interview. He told me he never accept any money from the contractors and never make trouble for them. And since his graduation, every time when we, he read in newspaper you know, that some people were suffering and asked for donations, he always donated money to them. But now, those engineers that ask money from the contractor who went to enjoy life in nightclub and visit the red light area, all of them already got new jobs except him. He almost raised his voice and both his hands opened up now. Who say there is the law of karma? Who say good people will get good luck? I'm a good person and now I'm losing my job. I tried to calm him now <laughs> and told him, look, Chong, when you want to go for an interview, then you should prepare for it. What has a donation to the poor uh, and a kindness to the contractor has anything to do with the interview? You should bring some documentation of the work that you are familiar with and never let the interview. And the viewer keep on asking you because after a few questions, they will immediately know your weak point. Try to lead them to look at your documentations and let them ask about the project you have nicely documented. Since you are familiar with it, no matter how they ask, then you are able to answer it. This will greatly increase your chance of success in the interview. But Chong got a problem. <laughs> he never documented any project. I told him, I just completed the documentation of calculating the loading capacity of a pile. I use a technique called remount handle test. When the pile is about to set, we paste a graph paper on the surface, then with the hammer strike the path to sing it, then we draw a pencil with a horizontal guide uh, to get a rebound curve where the pile where the pile bound up and down no? and the vibration is recorded. And from the rebound curve we can calculate the bearing capacity of the pile. This was a very specialized skill and not all the engineers are familiar with it. With the remount hammer test, we did not do the power, load, power loading test, which is time consuming and very costly. 
I passed him my documentations and brought him to the site to demonstrate and talk to him you know, how to get the remote curve. He worked and practiced very hard and soon learned the skill of it. Just before his job contract was about to end, he got an interview. The interview started at 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, started at 8 a.m. in the morning and he was the last candidate. <laughs> he fell down. As in the interview, they normally put the best candidate in front and the lesser one at the back and he was placed at the end, you know, meaning the chances for him were very, very low. By the time he reaches his term, it was already 6 p.m. in the evening. All the interviewers were dead tired and sat there expressing this <laughs> like a bunch of locks. They just casually asked what he was doing at the moment. Tom quickly took out the well-prepared uh, documentations and started to explain to them about the rebound hammer test for hiring. All the interviewers came over you know, to see the documentations as Tom explained it down all the way. None of them asked any question. When Chong finished the explanation, the chief interviewer asked Chong, okay, please go out and sit for a while. Disappointed and frustrated, disappointment, you know, and frustration filled the heart of Chong. The interviewer must be very tired. They did, they did not even ask a question. This interview will be doomed at those before this. And he wondered why they did not send him home and ask him to wait. Time take it away. Slowly, finally they asked him to come back into the interview room. They told him he was successful in the interview and decided to employ him. The offered salary was 2,500 ringgit with a traveling mileage claim of 50 cents per kilometer and he could start working as soon as possible. Chong immediately turned wild with joy and excitement. You know. At that time, the economy was bad and Malaysia was experiencing recession. Salary was poor. Both his and my salary were less than 2,000 ringgit per month. One of my friends, who was also an Australian graduate, only got a job with 900 ringgit after jobless for a long time. And many of Chong's colleagues, who were enjoying life in nightclubs, frequent visitors in red light areas, and squeezed money from the contractor, none of them got such a high pay. Also, the Maris claim that time for us was 35 cents per kilometer and they offered Chong twice as much. They explained to Chong, recently they got a huge contract that involved a lot of piling. The remote hammer test presented by Chong would save them a lot of time and money as they did not uh, do the costly pile loading test. After seeing the detailed records presented by Chong, they immediately know Chong was the right candidate. After the success in the interview, Chong called me and talked in a very high pitch, excited pitch, you know. My documentation and the remote hammer test worked like charm. And I talked to him. Now, did you believe in the law of cause and effect? Uh, he was affirmative now. Uh, when you want to go for an interview, Prepared for the interview. That is all. The next day, I had free coffee <laughs> as he treated me. He was excited about the new job. Then he asked, did I have any psychic powers? I thought it very funny. I asked why. He said, I documented a few products, especially the bridges, which was my specialty. But I only handed him the documentation of Paling. If I handed him the documentation of breaches, then the result of the interview may, may not end well. How could I sense that party demonstration was good for him? I found it hard to answer his question. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of psychic powers. Actually, I ignore psychic power during the practice of Sunya. Even though many of my Sunya students showed a lot of miraculous achievements which invariably were ignored and turned out by me because miracles could never solve our day-to-day -day problem and never remove suffering from us. However, it is true that after the practice of Sunya, 
our senses become more acute and we can sense the development of the event and the possible outcome of certain action. <coughs> Even if it's not foolproof, but good enough for us to engage our action, modify our strategies to deal with the challenges we face. Miracles are useless for us, but acumen in the senses or the kind of spontaneous awareness which all sujatis were develop is very helpful. When I want to pass more documentation, when I want to pass some documentation to Chong, I need to make some selections. My specialty was on the construction of bridges, but the documentation was huge, consisting of surveying the site, soil testing, flood record, current speed of the river, choice of types of bridge, and, and then the piling test, concrete test, and a lot of other tests. At the time, I was supervised some building and construction works too. There was one common documentation for both the building works and the bridge works. What's the documentation for the piling? So instinctively, I said that piling documentation would suit him well. As in most construction work, piling is always required. So piling may be the best chance for him to impress the interviewer. After listening to my explanation, <laughs> Chong still felt that it was some kind of psychic power and it exactly you know, fit in the interview until the interviewer need not ask him any question. I told Chong, I never care of psychic power. It may be just pure coincidence. I started to explain to him about Sonia. Then immediately he felt. I tried to explain Buddhism to him and quickly cut me short. He told me he just converted to Christian and did not want to discuss anything about Buddhism. I told him, teaching of Buddha and Buddhism may not be the same thing. No? One is the practice and the one is the belief. We are dealing with the practice, not the belief. I told Chong, the practice of Sunya do not interfere with his belief in Christ and become a Christian. Now he did get a job by applying the law of cause and effect from the teaching in Sunya. So if Sunya did not interfere with, with his belief, then how could it create any problem for him? Chong told me his wife was a Christian, but he was a free thinker and more towards uh, Buddhism initially. But after getting problems with the interviews and failing so many times, he became very stressed. His wife was very worried about him and brought him to meet a pastor. The pastor put a hand on his head, on his head and blessed him. A great sense of peace and serenity, you know, came to him and he felt good and thankful. Then he converted into Christian and he told me, from that time on, Buddhism has nothing to do with him anymore, including all the teaching of karma, reincarnation, and etc. He no longer believes in this. Once again, I told him, I am not promoting Buddhism. Sunya is a teaching of Buddha, but it's not Buddhism. Chong felt very funny, you know. If it is the teaching of Buddha, then why is it not Buddhism? I told Chong, Buddhism is a faith system, dealing with your death and life, dealing with the salvation of your soul. But Sunya is a practice. The salvation of our soul has nothing to do with Sunya. The principle of Sunya is based on Diamond Sutra. And in the Sutra, Buddha created his Dharma or, or teaching can help tens of millions of people to save themselves. But none of the salvation is due to the practice. He taught nothing and saved no one. Means you have to go back to your own belief to save your soul. It has nothing to do with Sunya. In Sunya, we only talk about peace and prosperity. Now you get your job because of the practice of Sunya, you prepare the cause and the result or the effect is good. That is all. It has nothing to do with salvation of your soul. Chong was amazed by my explanation and said no one explained Buddhism to him like this. Once again, I stress it is not Buddhism. I am not converting people into Buddhists. He could continue to breathe in Christ and seek salvation of his soul that had nothing to do with Sunya. Chong pondered for a while and told me, maybe 
he should focus on his belief and not to involve some practice that may jeopardize his belief. He told me he, he was moved by the power of Jesus and felt a kind of peace that he never felt before. It was so moving. Maybe he should not be involved in any other practices. I told him that believing in Christ was his choice. Now Christ was his father. Buddha has made it clear. Everyone has only one father, but can have many teachers. Father is a lot you believe in, but Buddha declared himself as Tathagata, mean the teacher to human and dewa, and people call him Bhagawan, mean the world honored one, not the world worship one. Only in later days, some ignorant gurus and Baba turned the meaning of Bhagawan to become God in direct contradiction to the teaching of Buddha. Bhagawan is a title to Buddha, <laughs> nothing to do with any god. Finally, I asked Chong, the scent of peace and serenity, has it come back often after the first encounter with the pastor? He said, no. Then I told him, I have a technique that could let you feel the kind of peace and serenity. Will you be interested? Uh, then immediately, immediately spark him up, you know. He turned excited and asked me, hey, how to achieve the kind of peace and serenity again? So in my next video, I shall discuss how Chong get his peace and serenity again and how his practice changed his family. Now, in this video, remember the teaching about the cause and effect. When you plant cucumber, do not expect to get watermelon. No? You reap what you sow. See you again. Bye-bye.